Good evening and welcome to First Lutheran in Lesore, Minnesota, in our Ash Wednesday service. This is not the Ash Wednesday any of us had envisioned, but it's what we get because of the snowstorm that is coming. Our service this evening will not be the, the full service in its entirety. Obviously, we can't do communion like we would have normally, but we could do ashes. And so we're planning on doing some imposition of ashes here in the beginning. I have in front of me, I have some ashes that are palm branches that were burned some time ago, including this past year, that I mixed with some oil. If you have ashes or would like to pause this video in order to go make some ashes, feel free to do that. But I will caution you that you should mix it with oil. If you do it with water, it may turn into lye and you may chemically burn yourself. So please use oil and please be safe. A reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother con conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from, from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing loud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Do good design in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Trusting in the name of God, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us return to God with all our hearts, confessing our sin and our need for forgiveness transformation, and healing. Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we ourselves have been forgiven. We confess to you, Lord. We are too often deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit we confess to you, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, the pride, greed, and hypocrisy in our lives. We confess our self-indulgent ways 
and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger with our own inadequacies, our frustrations with ourselves and others, our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our love of physical possessions, of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship, our failure to witness to the faith that you have placed within us. We confess to you, Lord. By the power of your Holy Spirit, bring us to repentance for all the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, in our silent indifference to injustices and cruelty. Grant us repentance, Lord. For all of, uh, all of our false judgments, for our uncharitable thoughts towards others, and for our prejudices and contempt for those who differ from us, grant us repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us, grant us repentance, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore us all, good Lord, so that we may walk in newness of life now and forever. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great, and your steadfast love endures forever. At this point, if you have ashes prepared, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on your forehead, remembering your baptism in the ashes, and remembering that we are from dust, and to dust we shall return. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Joel chapter 2 verses 1 through 2 and 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a feast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his groom and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
Our second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning at verse 20 through chapter 6, verse 10. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you. And on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are all well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to the sixth chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 21. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward with your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stay and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites. For they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you all. And whatever form you are gathering, however you are marking this special day, grace and peace to you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I must confess that the last time I preached to an empty sanctuary and, and directly into a camera was COVID. It was during the early phases of COVID before we could regather in our small church in North Carolina. And granted, this is just a temporary stay because of the weather, and I hope and pray that you all are doing well. It's given me, though, a little bit of flashback, perhaps a little bit of PTSD, 
of just the trauma and the hurt that we went through with COVID. I don't think it's a stretch to say that most of us love a good quote, or at least find them inspirational. History, after all, is replete with generals and famous soldiers and giving speeches to inspire armies, nations, and groups. Or there are quotes that are a lot less formal, but yet that stick into our collective brains. Quotes like, I'm Batman, or I'll be back, or I am your father. Bonus points if you can identify where those those quotes come from, where those movie quotes come from. But tonight, I'm going to be drawing from, again, my one of my favorite book series, The Lord of the Rings. And if you aren't familiar with these books, the very, very brief synopsis is that in the fantasy world of Middle-earth, there is an all-powerful bad guy named Sauron who wants to conquer all of Middle-earth. And in order to kind of be eternal in a way, he has created a ring, a ring into which he poured his will and his malice and his cruelty. And even though he died when the ring was cut from his hand, he was still able to be in some form, some corruptive form, present through the ring, through the thousand or so years in which his ring was cut from his hand to when it was uncovered or recovered and then eventually destroyed by an unlikely person named Frodo Baggins. But Frodo Baggins, who is a, a halfling in the lore of J.R.R. Tolkien, Frodo is in the unlikeliest of people to, to take on such a burden as destroying this evil object. Frodo is the suffering servant in this story, and he confess, confesses to the mentor and guide that he has been with, Gandalf the Grey, a wizard. He confesses that he doesn't really want this burden. I mean, after all, who would want this burden of having to go thousands of miles to in, and in all sorts of evil and, and bad things trying to harm him and reclaim that ring? His very life is at risk. His In a lot of ways, his soul is at risk in all of this as well. And he confesses to Gandalf, I wish it need not have happened in my time, that the ring came into my possession. And Gandalf says, so do I, and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. You know, in my lifetime, there are things in which I wish I never had to experience. When I was young, one of the very first memories of tragedies of death on a grand scale was the Oklahoma City bombing in 1995, where a truck bomb killed 168 people and a great deal of children. I was six at the time. I remember being terrified a little, a short time later in 1998 when President Clinton launched rockets into Iraq and we watched that on TV in my home. A year later, I remember experiencing the horror of watching the very first mass school shooting at Columbine High School in Colorado. Two short years later in 2001, the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Centers, Pentagon, and then Somerset, Somerset, Pennsylvania, left me shaken to my core. What followed in the years after 9-11 were brutal updates on news, newspapers and the internet of soldiers being killed fighting in Afghanistan and Iraq. In 2012, Brittany and I came home from work and turned on the TV to a discovery that made me weep. As children were killed in their elementary school in Sandy Hook, Connecticut, the children who died were the same age as my youngest son, Ian, or the same age he is now. A couple years later, so two years after that fact, 
I lost my mother to suicide and to violence. Four years later was the shooting of Stoneman Douglas High School, where 17 young adults were killed while at school. In late 2019, COVID arrived on the global scene and worldwide, we have lost up to 6.8 million people to this disease, from this illness. Just last week, we had another mass shooting on Michigan State University campus. And there seems to be no end in sight to this violence on a grand scale. These totals fail to take into account all of the other deaths that happen on a regular daily basis. The numbers fail to capture the personal sufferings of all the illnesses that don't die, but are left with crippling medical debt, long-term effects that we just don't recover from. People grieving and mourning lives lost or lives irrevocably changed, ir irreversibly changed because of violence disease, and things outside of their own control. We've been watching for over a year Ukraine and Russia go at it in this war that does not appear to be ending anytime soon. And not too long ago, we have been watching Turkey and Syria dig themselves out from the massive earthquake. In our lives of experiencing and watching others suffer through this life, we come broken sorrowful and empty to Ash Wednesday. And perhaps even like Frodo from Lord of the Rings, wishing all this suffering had not happened in our time. We come crying out to God that we are not worthy and we will mark our heads with ashes to be reminded that we are dust and to dust we shall return. In a few weeks short time, will join together with the crowds who welcomed Jesus at the entrance to Jerusalem, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King. Only a few short days later, to join with those same crowds again, shouting, Crucify Him, Crucify Him. Lent is the season in particular in which we are called as Christians to turn away from our sinful desires and turn back to Christ, who offers forgiveness to even those who mocked and hated him on the cross. Even as we are reminded that we are created from dust, and to dust we shall return, we are still given the grace of God to carry the good news of Jesus Christ in this life, given the grace to know that we are not abandoned in the struggles and the horrors of our own making, but that God is with us and that we are sealed in the mark of Christ and that God does not abandon us. Yes, we have been born to a fallen world that has given us the unbearable task of living and suffering that we wish we didn't have to in this lifetime. Yet God is there to carry us and to love us in spite of the brokenness in which humanity turned God's good world into. As people who suffer and yet also point to Christ, our call is given and the rewards are stated in the Beatitudes, which we read a few short weeks ago. In other words, it's like Frodo and Gandalf. We wish we didn't have to live with all of this suffering, but we are, and we aren't doing it alone. So God has been with us. God is encouraging us and loving us and redeeming our brokenness in order that we might be in right relationship with God and with each other. Now, what are we going to do with the time that has been given to us to change this suffering? Our call to repentance is that of acknowledging that we can't do it alone. We can't even get out of bed without the Spirit of God giving us that strength. But by returning to God and by trying to be the people who live out God's calling, by living out 
the Beatitudes of what a child of God looks like. We aren't just living just to live. We are not just being dust that walks this earth in the shape of a human being. We are quite literally living out the cross, which is etched on our foreheads this night. But also, it's living out our baptismal covenants into which we have been baptized and are growing into on a daily basis. And we go nowhere in this life where we don't carry that cross. The burden becomes there then to carry that cross in a way that doesn't point to us, but points to Jesus. Which is why Jesus instructed the disciples in Matthew to pray, to fast, and to mourn, not to be noticed by others and take away the, the glory that is due to God, but rather to focus ourselves, our worship, and our lives on God. That's not easy, and we'll fail in that too sometimes, but the grace of God knows no bounds. It comes at our sorrow and our repentance and calls us as God's own. The grace of God carries us through each day, giving us the strength to lift others and ourselves up, pointing to cross, pointing to the cross where love made flesh, made sure that even in death, God is with still, still with us in this life to the grave and beyond. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. As we move into the, the prayers of the people, the, the intercessory prayers, I will offer up the petition of merciful God and feel free to respond at home. Receive our prayer. O oh Lord, our God, you gather your church and call us to return to you. Accompany us throughout our Lenten pilgrimage. Create in us clean hearts and renew all the baptized to declare your praise. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew, renew your creation, O oh God. Bring rains to parched places and heal lands affected by a changing climate that all inhabitants of the earth experience your abundance. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew the nations, O God. Give voice to those on the margin and resolve to world leaders who seek to protect those most vulnerable. 
loosen the bonds of injustice, and bring an end to all violence, oppression, and persecution. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew your people, O God. Respond to those who cry out to you in secret or in seclusion. Equip us with compassion to care for those who experience homelessness, food insecurity, economic hardship and illness. We, we pray especially for our homebound and those recovering in Turkey, Syria, Ukraine, and Russia. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Renew this congregation, O God. Inspire our faith formation ministries and those who teach and lead. Invigorate us with lifelong curiosity and wonder as we grow with as disciples. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O Lord, our God, we give thanks for all your faithful ones of every time and place. Renew us by the example of their lives of prayer and service, and at the last bring us with them into your everlasting presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Go in peace, serve in love. Thanks be to God.